We welcome you to Inside the Hawks, our weekly podcast that focuses in on all things St. Joseph's Athletics. Matt Martucci with you, and this week uh, another edition that focuses mostly on men's and women's basketball. Tough season for St. Joseph's men's basketball continues at this point. 0-5 in the Atlantic 10 for the first time since 1990-91 and 5-13 and overall. In order to make you smile, though, Hawk fans, when thinking about the past, we decided that we would bring in a former Hawk that had a large role of the perfect season team in 03-04, and then, of course, uh, the NIT runner-up team in 04-05, and, of course, that being Chet Stachitis, who stopped by with Joe Lenardi during halftime of the St. Joseph-St. Louis game. So let's catch up with Chet and uh, see what's going on with him. Here's Joe Lenardi with former Hawk Chet Stachitis. Welcome back to Chaffetz Arena. It's halftime. Hawks trailing St. Louis here in the Atlantic 10 by a count of 29 to 19. Joe Lenardi joined by a very familiar name and happy to see his face here in St. Louis. Chet Stachitis, Hawk class of 2006. Correct. Am I getting that right? Wow. Chet, first thing, what are you doing with your life, but what are you doing in St. Louis <laughs> in the middle of January? Yeah, I just thought I'd come out for the weekend for a game. You know, just had nothing going on, so I figured I'd, it. I'd head west. No. Uh, actually, uh, you know, big news in my life. Just got engaged last weekend. I heard a rumor about that floating around. Yep. So Does uh, she know yet? <laughs> yes, she knows. <laughs> so, uh, actually, my fiance Annie, Annie Harkins, we went to uh, undergrad together at right. St. Joe's. So, she was a field hockey player there, and she uh, went to law school here at SLU, and she's living out here. So came out here for the weekend um you know was, and her parents are out here this weekend as well so we're having a you know nice afternoon at the st joe's game she just said to me when you came over this is perfect because he's got a face for radio <laughs> <laughs> i doubt she said that well she said yes so that's all that matters <laughs> that's all that matters well that done so how did you do the deed and and when uh it was last weekend down by the art museum so i uh, had a couple surprises for her and uh rented out a room at the waterworks afterwards so for all our friends and family there so i'm gonna admit i thought i did a good job joe well done <laughs> yeah i won't give you all the gory details but no but I, and i'm sure you got a lot of help from your friends and former teammates who have started to go through this uh phase of life on just how to how to you know clinch the deal absolutely absolutely it was it was great there was a, a lot of you know saint joe's faces around the crowd so it, it's always great to see well, congratulations. Now, professionally, fill us in a little bit. I know you're uh, retired from competitive yep. basketball. Yep. I, after school, I did, uh, I call it two, two years overseas, but, it, you know, it was, it was more spotty than that. So, you know, my first season, I was over in Lithuania and Portugal. And then my second season, I, I tell people I was in Poland, just to keep it short, but I was on three different teams in Poland, stop in Luxembourg, stop in England. So... I'm, I'm really glad I did it. It was a great life experience. I, I think I did it for the right amount of time, but I'm glad to be back in the Philadelphia area and starting my quote-unquote real career. So, As? Uh, I'm in a work for a company called Fusion Logistics. We uh, we resell for UPS okay. and, about, and about 30 different freight carriers. So just moved into management there, and it's going really well, and I really enjoy what I do. And did you were you dabbling in graduate school the last time we talked? Uh, I think when I first came back, it, okay. I might have been just because, you know, the economy was it's so... the thing to do? Uh, yeah, it's kind of the thing to do because no one was really hiring. But, uh, you know, I'm glad I held out on that front because I'm really happy what I'm doing now. Well, I have to say, Chet, I do miss you. I miss your mom and dad, so give <laughs> us the family update. Uh, they're doing well. Uh, they're, they're down in Florida, so I travel a bunch. We're going to uh, my youngest brother, Ted, is uh, going to be a junior at Wake Forest. Right. I'm still competing for that. He won the starting quarterback spot last year, got injured, so he has to earn it again going into next season so they'll they'll be traveling every single weekend to go to every game and then the middle brother tucker he uh he's in the navy so he's uh on a nuclear sub so he's based out of charleston so we're, we're all kind of spread across the eastern seaboard glad one of you guys has a real job <laughs> helping the country yeah exactly so I, re I rest easier at night knowing my brother is, uh, is protecting us <laughs> now you're living in the philadelphia area yep uh so i'm assuming you get to see a fair amount of the hawks I haven't been as much as I'd like. I, I went to the opener, uh, Western Kentucky. I actually got to go with, with Dave Mallon, so mm -hmm. I, you know, obviously keep, keep in close touch with Dave. And uh, This is only my second game of the season, so I'm going to make it a point to get to more, obviously, as, as time frees up here. I'm almost afraid to ask what you think. Uh, you know, I, I think they could use me. <laughs> I'm not afraid Today? to play Yeah, absolutely. I can, I can, of course, I believe I can still get out there and play, but um, you know, good young talent. That, 
it, you see it coming along. It's it's always tough. You're starting three freshmen and a sophomore, right. so you can see the makings of, of something that that's coming together. I just think it, it you need to stop relying on the cells individually and, and, and kind of buy into the team aspect. Mm. And again, that's only from seeing two games in person, Joe. So don't take right. my word for it. But I think there's there's potential from what I see. It's just let, let's buy into the team atmosphere is what I, what I've seen from my first half of basketball in a while. Well, it's great to see you. I knew there had to be a reason you were in St. Louis. <laughs> It's not the weather. It's not the distance. I know you're not playing golf. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> so that's got to that's gotta change. Uh, Chet Stokitis, you'll see him around Hagen Arena and the Philadelphia area. Your company is? Fusion Logistics out we'll, of, Fusion, out of uh, Wayne, King of Prussia area. We'll expect to hear them as a sponsor soon on the St. Joseph's oh, you better Sports believe Network it. now that you're <laughs> super-duper management material. <laughs> but... Uh, and congratulations on the engagement. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You got it. We'll be back with more of the Halftime Show. Hawks trailing the Billikens here, 29-19 on the St. Joseph's Sports Network. Once again, we thank Joe Lenardi and Chet Stakaitis, and we wish Chet the best of luck on the engagement and all of his future plans. Congratulations. On the women's side of things, Cindy Griffin and the Hawks have now dropped three straight Atlantic 10 games. They're 1-3 and three in conference, but 11-7 and seven overall, and have a big three-game stretch, including two at home, coming up against UMass and St. Bonaventure before going on the road to Dayton later next week. I had the chance to sit down with Coach Griffin uh, to talk about some of the team's perimeter woes of late and uh, some of the other struggles. The front court, though, playing very well, rebounding the basketball very well. Had a chance to ask her a little bit about that as well. So here's our sit-down with Cindy Griffin on Inside the Hawks right here on St. Joseph's All Access. Our bi-weekly check of women's basketball, head coach Cindy Griffin is with us. Coach, uh, kind of a rough stretch as of late. Dropped, a, dropped three straight now at this point uh, in the Atlantic 10. If you had to pinpoint a couple things that have uh, that have gone wrong, uh, what would you say? Well, I think our, our, um, our shooting. You know, I think the shots that we were making um, in our, you know, 11 games that we've won, um, you know, we shot the ball really well from from the two and from the three, and we just haven't done that on a consistent basis um, against the top three teams in our league. And, and you're not going to beat those type of teams if you're not operating on all cylinders. And um, you know, we've uh, our two leading scores uh, struggled, and um, you know that's that's a testament to the other team's defense. But also, I th I think you know I, I think it's just a different a style of basketball that we need to get used to in the Atlantic Ten. And um, you know we gotta we gotta learn from them and and we gotta take advantage of our home games and um, you know obviously win the games we should win on the road. You mentioned your two leading scorers. Uh, one of them, Michelle Baker, was looking at the Atlantic Ten numbers. Eight of her first 41 in uh, in a ten play. What can you say uh, about her struggles? Is is there a reason for it? Is the ball just not just not falling for her, or uh, uh, what's the reason that she's not shooting well? Well, I think um, you know she Michelle works on her game all the time. I mean, she she'll redo those shots and has redone those shots over and over again. And um, you know, I think sometimes it's it's a matter of trying too hard. And, um, and I think that's exactly what the case is with her. Um, I think she just needs to relax, and we've told her, you know, just relax and take the game as it comes and get involved in other ways, offensive rebounds, defensive tips, and that type of thing. So she's been able to consistently do that for us um, and, and keep us, you know, involved, keep herself involved on the defensive end, and that's really helped. Uh, into Atlantic 10 play now at this point. Uh, what have you seen from Aaron Shields? Uh, obviously, it's it's kind of a different ball game when you're in that first season, the non-conference play, and then you move into conference play, especially when you're a freshman. Yeah, I mean, Aaron's done a, an unbelievable job for us. Um, she knows the game. She studies the game. She reads the game. Um, and she plays the game. You know, she really fights. And, um, you know, she hasn't she doesn't have a whole lot of, of height or, you know, thickness, but she's a strong kid and she plays bigger than she is. And, um, you know, obviously her shooting has helped us stretch out the floor for our bigs. And um, just another threat out there that the defense has to be concerned about. We're with Hawk head coach Cindy Griffin here on Inside the Hawks. Uh, you get Temple in uh, your previous Atlantic 10 game. I have to ask, uh, over the years, they've just kind of been the thorn in the, uh, the proverbial side at, at this point. What is it with them uh, that for some reason uh, that makes it uh, tough to get over the hump in that game? Well, I think we know each other so well. You know, I think both teams are very well scouted. And, um, you know, I think it comes down to, to having some, some athletes versus our shooters. And um, we weren't able to capitalize on that last night. 
and uh, yeah, I was impressed with um, with our defense. I think our defense was terrific. We held their two leading scorers in check, <clears throat> and we out rebounded them. And and to say those two things against a team like Temple, um, who has you know has two possibly two Atlantic 10 all-conference players in that rotation that we're talking about with McCarthy and with Wallace, that's pretty impressive. But the offensive part of it, we struggled with. There was extreme ball pressure. Uh, we didn't get any sniffs from our from our three-pointers. They were all contested. And um, I thought our post players stepped up and did a nice job, but it wasn't enough. We need, we need balanced scoring, and um, we didn't get that. I was just going to say, uh, you have to be impressed with, with the way Samira Van Grinsman is, has really adjusted, uh, obviously, to, to life in the Atlantic 10. Seems like uh, it hasn't been much of a transition at all from non-conference to conference. Right. Uh, she's really you know, studied the game as far as uh, our opponents and you know, where she can get her shots. And you know, I think what, what um, others maybe don't realize is that she is such a force for us on the defensive end, um, you know, just with her rebounding and her size. And she helps us in other ways without scoring, setting terrific screens for our shooters. So she's really, really helped us in so many ways. And, and it's glad to see, I'm glad to see that her shots are falling and she's being able to, to you know, be rewarded in the stack column as well. How's that foot speed coming along for her? It's going to be a challenge for her. You know, it's going to be a challenge. But, um, you know, sometimes Will's got to uh, beat skill. So she's, you know, she wills herself down the court. And uh, we'll give her blows when, when she needs it. And uh, we're able to substitute Ilsa in there and give us some quality minutes. And Tom was back. So we, we'll sub her in a little bit, too, to give the two starters some rest. Yeah, always good to have uh, Dominique Bryant, who uh, is your top three-point shooter percentage-wise, back for sure. It is, it is, and just that senior leadership and somebody that knows the game um, and has the experience, and and uh, you know that's invaluable. So you know we'll work her back in and and see which, if if um, you know we can really have her stretch out the floor like she did in those first couple games for us, and she's been an integral part of this program both on and, on and off the court, and we just want her to finish strong and help us finish strong. Finally, a uh, big stretch coming up, uh, obviously, uh, over the next three games. Uh, you get UMass and then St. Bonaventure and then on the road at Dayton. Obviously, teams that in the past you've, uh, you've had mixed success with. Uh, what do you see, uh, just kind of a quick synopsis uh, from each of those teams? Uh, well, we'll just take one game at a time with them. But, um, you know, in my opinion, they're an absolute must. I mean, we, we have to get these next two at home. And, um, you know, if we can steal Dayton, that would be that would be terrific. Um, but we have to take one game at a time. And, and I'm just concerned about getting our, our shooters back on track and, um, you know, not losing sight of our defense intensity and, and building from our rebounding success in the last in the last game against Temple. All right, Coach. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how it plays out. Good luck. All right. Thanks, Matt. Hawk head coach Cindy Griffin with us here on Inside the Hawks. SJU will come home this Saturday against UMass and then on Wednesday against St. Bonaventure. And, of course, for tickets on the website at SJUHawks.com. For Cindy Griffin, I'm Matt Martucci. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we wrap up Inside the Hawks, this week's edition on St. Joseph's All Access. Thanks to Coach Griffin for stopping by, and, of course, we will talk to her in about two weeks again to get an update on the women's basketball program and where the team stands as far as a potential seed in the Atlantic 10 tournament. We'll be drawing a little bit closer to that the next time we do catch up. Join us once again next week where we will catch up with some of the spring sports as their seasons are on the horizon here for SJU Athletics. But for now, I'm Matt Martucci for St. Joseph's All Access. This is Inside the Hawks. Talk to you next week, Hawk fans.